I decided to flip my lectures, even though they were already punctuated with clicker questions and so had some measure of interactivity, because I found that I was introducing only simple concepts during the lecture. We never had time to get to more complex concepts, and so students were struggling with their homework or assignments outside of class. As we went to the flip model, I could introduce simple concepts before class through videos or through the textbook. Now students could struggle with the concepts in class with their peers and with guidance. Now in class we can get to much more complex concepts than we could ever get to before. Here's the setting. I teach one course in an active learning classroom. We have between 15 and 30 students enrolled in this course. I also teach in large lecture halls. I start each week by communicating the intended learning outcomes to the students. Online, the students watch videos or read the textbook. They complete an online pre-class test. In-class consists of interactive learning activities. There are opportunities for extra interaction outside the class, such as tutorials, office hours, and a discussion forum. Students then complete an online assignment, and ideally they've taken steps towards achieving the learning outcomes for that week. The pre-class test is designed so that it's simpler, just covering the very basic levels of the things they've seen online. The end of week assignment is more integrative, pulling together all the different pieces from that week and from earlier in the course. The blended course structure is very similar. Essentially it consists of the flipped class structure plus a choice. Toward the end of the course, students can either complete a group assignment where they would not attend four classes, or they can attend the four classes and complete an extra module. The students make that choice individually, and in the past approximately 65% of students have chosen to do the group assignment. There's a lot of technology in this course. From the student's perspective, we have a learning management system, there's online homework, we have different kinds of learning tools, we use a polling system in class, molecular models, computers, and whiteboards, etc. For me, there's either a mobile podium, I use an iPad to be wireless in the class, we can use document cameras, multiple screens, there are cameras to take different kinds of images, we can record or live stream classes using Echo 360 or Adobe Connect, and there's the recording system that I use to create the class videos. Now with all these components, there is the possibility for students or the professor to become completely lost or confused. So here are some of the ways that I use to try to organize the class, make it predictable, and simple to follow along. First is the format from the student's view. This is the learning management system. In the left menu bar, there are the quick links and resources for the students. They need to get quickly to their class notes because they're sitting in class, they can quickly do so. Then there's a module section over on the right hand side, which presents the content and the activities in the recommended order. I make and edit recordings using Camtasia and use a fairly high quality microphone to record. I post an outline of the notes before class. These notes contain the guiding questions that we are going to use and any data that I don't want them taking time to copy out during class time. I'd rather us spend our time in class working. We have lots of different kinds of activities in class that might include demonstrations, animations, multiple choice or ranking, numeric, simple kinds of questions, questions that ask students to develop an argument, justify their answer, a lot of data interpretation, and we also pull in common errors to pre-class tests. Students answer using a classroom response system, right now called Top Hat. Learning outcomes anchor the course, and all the components are aligned with those learning outcomes, including the online components like videos and text, the in-class activities, the online activities, and the assessment. I evaluated the flipped course model by comparing it to the traditional model, and found that students in the flipped model had higher grades, higher student satisfaction, lower failure rates, and lower withdrawal rates. You can read more about the structure and evaluation of my flipped courses in my Chemistry Education Research and Practice Journal article. The details are on screen. Thanks for watching.